Hello, <clears throat> my name is Jan, and um, I want to make a video today talking about Lepedialyte. And the reason why I'm making a video today about Lepedialyte is just because it has really been like helping me like in the last little while. And um, I spent a little more time this year getting in, in, into crystals. And um, before that, I was really kind of on a spiritual journey that was taking me more into like the awareness of totems and different spirituality and um, I'm Aboriginal so half of my um, my dad's side is uh, no my dad's side is um, carrier and my mom was Finnish from Finland but um, I've always felt like a deep connection to anything in the spirit because of um, a, a lot of influence of water on my mom's side being a cancer and my brother was a cancer and I was actually born really close to the sign of cancer but um, I'm a Leo, so my sign was always really influenced much more with the Chinese aspect of it, which was the year of the dog. And in the dog, and in Chinese, I'm the water dog. But um, I'm a musician, I'm an artist, but I'll do another video another day that kind of gives you more information about me. But what I want to talk about today is Lepedialite, just because I really feel like Lepedia, Lepedio, Lepediolite, if I can say it right, um, is really about us coming to the place in our life where we are free and independent and it also helps us to really understand being creative and it helps us with um in this in, in the crystal bible which i'm sure you all have or those of you who are into crystals like i am will definitely have reference there basically the pedia it says that it's the pedia it clears electromagnetic pollutions and, and should be placed on computers to absorb their emanations. When the Pedialyte takes microform, its properties are, jet are greatly amplified, and this is the most efficient mopping up tool. The Pedialyte insists on being used for the highest good. It dissipates negativity, it activates and opens the throat, heart and third eye, and crown chakras, clearing blockages and bringing cosmic awareness. This stone aids in shamanic or spiritual journeying and access to the Akashic Record. It tunes you into thoughts, feelings from other lives that are created and creating a blockage in your life now. It can take you forward to the future. Lepidolite is extremely re re useful in the reduction of stress and depression. It helps obsessive thoughts, relieves despondency, and overcomes insomnia. Lepidolite contains lithium and is helpful in stabilizing mood swings and bipolar disorders. It is excellent for overcoming any kind of emotional or mental dependency, supportive in releasing forms of addiction and complaints of all kinds. Now, this month has been really interesting because prior to this month, I was unemployed and I was going through kind of a rut and I was spending a lot of time with addictions, just to say it, put it mildly. And, um... It's funny when you're like a teenager and you and your friends are at the park and you're like drinking a bottle of wine out of a paper bag and you're hanging out and you know it's cool or whatever but like you get to this point in your life when you're on this path and like there's something that's pulling you to greater things where you really have to realize that anything that you put in the way on your journey is going to like as a distraction is going to stop you from getting where you want to go and um I've been kind of overwhelmed in my life with a lot of talents and it's not to blow my own horn or anything, but like I started at a very early age being very artistic and that bled into being a musician and I played like eight instruments in high school, I was in an orchestra and I did all kinds of stuff in my life, but um, because of coming from a really kind of abusive background in a, a, a darker, you know, side on my dad's side with a lot of like drug addiction and abuse and like there was, a, it's a long story, but like basically just started to realize that those things were not funny anymore and they were like standing in the way so as soon as I started to like really connect with Lepidiolite I don't know if you can see it it's a really beautiful it's it comes in a few different forms it comes plate like layers and it's slightly shiny it has a very very beautiful sparkling kind of quality to it and it's different than other gemstones that I've noticed like say quartz or something enhances standing in your own space free from the influence of others. It is a calming stone that soothes sleep disturbances and emotional stress, bringing deep emotional healing. 
Lipidiolate locates the site of dis-ease. And if anybody, if you know the root word of disease, it actually means anything that's a dis-ease in our body. So disease isn't nothing more than, you know, I mean, the way we think can be cause dis-ease. And that's why it can be like considered a disease to have like a really bad attitude or a really negative outlook. So changing the way that you even look at life can be like therapeutic and actually really healing. So what the crystals do is they help us to come in tune with who who our higher self is and they bring us into alignment in a very spiritual way and to help to facilitate the engine of this body and in, into the spiritual realm that exists in this physical reality that we're living in. It vibrates gently. Lipidiolite relieves allergies, strengthens the immune system, restructures DNA and enhances generation of negative ions. It relieves exhaustion, epilepsy, and Alzheimer's. It numbs scatia and neuralgia and overcomes joint problems. It is a detoxifier for the skin and connective tissues. Lipidiolite is excellent for menopause, especially as a gem elixir. It treats illness caused by sick building syndrome or computer stress. That's another thing. This sucks up all the crap that comes out of your computer and kind of like cleanses you from it hitting you so a lot of times when I'm like doing spiritual like reading or like looking online for different like kind of quotes or authors or things like that or whatever I'm just I put it right on my map anyway the next thing that I wanted to kind of segue into from Lapidio Light was this amazing book that I had bought in a while ago I don't know if you guys know it's a raw vegan model by the name of um I think his name is Anthony or something Anthony something or other but he's just such a resource about um, ethical things, but he had a quote from this book on his on his Facebook one day, and so I decided to buy it. And the pages were like something else. There was three pages that he had up that were really, really, really amazing about who you are, like myself, and like this concept of like other versus whatever. And I can get into a whole esoteric, convoluted speech about that. But what I really wanted to touch on was just a little bit in chapter two, which talks about guarding the senses, mindfulness, and clear comprehension. And I can share a little bit of this with you. So it goes, to perfect anything takes training. It is wise, however, not to think of this training as something imposed on us from outside. Rather, it is something we impose on ourselves because we realize that by conquering our own negative instincts and impulses, we will eventually conquer all illusions that create dukkha for us. Every step of the Buddha's teaching is designed to take us nearer to the, that goal. Seeing no danger from any side obviously brings a feeling of security. Knowing we have done nothing wrong, we have no guilt, no sense of omission or commission, and therefore we feel very much at ease. The Buddha gives us a simile. Just as a duly anointed Katya king, having conquered his enemies by that very fact, sees no danger from any side. So the monk, on account of his morality, sees no danger anywhere. He experiences himself the blameless bliss that comes from maintaining his Aryan morality. As the word bliss denotes an inner joy. It is not meditative bliss, which we will discuss in the later chapter, but a feeling of contentment that comes from knowing ourselves to be blameless and in no danger from our passions. That is such a powerful line, and I just feel like I need to say that one more time. The word bliss, let's start again from there. The word bliss denotes an inner joy. It is not meditative bliss which we will discuss in a later chapter, but a feeling of contentment that comes from knowing ourselves to be blameless and in no danger from our passion. To be an artist, to be a creative person, to be someone who goes out and follows a creative path is shut down in this, in this world that we live in. And this line just really hits home for me as an artist um, on my own journey where it says, to be blameless and in no danger from our passions. And I've been really, really on this whole thing lately about um, realizing that so much in my life has, has been me standing in my own way. And um, just through a lot of different personal experiences in the last little while in my relationships, I've come to realize that 
a real depth of knowing in what we are is really about how much we were willing to let our true nature and our true self be seen. And once we can expose things, you know, there's a really good author by the name of Debbie Ford, I think, and she wrote a book called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. And um, there's a story that basically goes something along the lines of a woman comes in and she's like, I'm a bitch and like, I... I'm horrible and I do this and I do that and she's kind of coming to terms with this dark part of her nature and she's expressing it and feeling like really guilty and like kind of having a hard time like putting it into the right language or whatever to this like counselor and feeling the guilt of it and wanting to it's basically showing us that we're denying this part of ourselves the part that is negative the part that wants to serve itself the part that wants to cut in line the part that wants to cut someone off that wants to just be a dick like basically and she basically says to this lady, you need to embrace that bitch. You need to embrace that part of yourself. You need to realize that maybe you needed to be a bitch at some point in your life to protect yourself. Maybe being a bitch was what got things done. Maybe being a leader, maybe being aggressive was the way that you protected yourself in your life. And if you can honor that part of yourself and integrate it into the wholeness of what you are and really be in tune with that, the fact that we are no, we're not just the good, we're not just the evil, we're equal parts of both. And I often use the reference of saying like there are two parts of myself, the part of me that is, is, is underdeveloped and the part of me that wants to forge forward. And we're in a potato sack race. And if this part's going way ahead of, of this part, if this part's going way ahead of this part, then you know what it's like when you're a potato sack race, you're gonna fall down. So you have to give yourself grace and you have to integrate both of these aspects of who you are. It's like the right brain and the left brain. It kinda looks like a brain, doesn't it? And you have to integrate these parts of who you are and move forward. And until you can accept that there are equal parts of each in your life, you're gonna constantly be hiding from people or showing one aspect of yourself. Or when you go to your work, you'll be your work self. And then when you go to your life, you'll be your life self. And you have to find that balance in between and realize are enough, that you are safe, and that this that this world is operated in such a way to facilitate what it is that you want to do with yourself. You just have to know what you want to do, and that's it. So I want to leave on that with you guys, and I want you to know that even in not knowing, there's a time where you can embrace that and just love yourself in the not knowing, and you say, okay, I don't know what I want to do right now. I don't know where I'm going. I have no idea what I, this job that I'm in, or this relationship, or this person, or that, or whatever I'm in. So I'm just going to sit and sit with that, and I'm going to say, I am okay with not knowing right now, and I'm going to let let life love me and bring what I need to me, and know that I'm safe, and that 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 like like she says in the book free from danger. You know, I also heard a lady tell me once, a really awesome lady in my life, uh, that I, uh, it's another story for another day, but um, she basically said something to me, she said, Jan, it's really important that you understand what freedom really means, and it was so profound at this time in my life, because I was in the middle of a big transition from moving from my hometown back to Vancouver, and back and forth and everything, but what she basically said to me was, freedom is nothing more than having something that nobody else can take away from you. And for some reason, that just, that clicked with me. It just hit so, it just hit the nail right on the head. And I just realized a state of mind can be freedom. Knowing what you feel and following it and, uh, and um, respecting those, those urges that are, that are there, the desires that you have, the things that are put inside of you, because they're there to show you something. They're there to bring you to your, to your truth. And the, the real demons in our life or anything that stands in the way of our hidden treasure and that's what actually the word demon means is it's like something that's the gatekeepers of, of, of our hidden treasure so I challenge every one of you to find a crystal that really resonates with you for me it's Lapidolite right now and for you it might be something else um, but, um, it's just, it's just the journey that we're on and, and don't give up the fight and keep on believing and, and surround yourself with people who get it because the people who get it are going to facilitate it and they're going to bring opportunities that, are, that weren't there before and you're, the world becomes new because when you change your mind, you change your life. So I'm going to end on that and I hope you all have a wonderful week and a wonderful day and stay gold, stay true to who you are because there's no one else like you. That's what I have to say.